Mm. Let's go, baby. We're going to get into our Ellie House Game of the Week recap. Our Ellie House Game of the Week. The Youngstown, Ursuline Irish traveled across the border yep. to the Farrell PA mm-hmm. to play the Steelers. Take us through it, Coach. What you see? It was, of course, the, the weather played a lot. Um... Played a lot into what you know the outcome and kind of what happened. The game got called short. We know it got rain delayed early and ended up getting called. Um, but kind of one thing that stuck out to me for Ursuline, they scored in all three phases. They scored on offense. Indeed. They scored on special teams. They scored on defense. Anytime you do that in, in, in one game, it's pro- almost a hundred percent, probably ninety eight, ninety seven, ninety eight percent. You're gonna win that game. Hat you trick, know what right I mean? Right That's right a hat right trick. The hat trick. Um, so for Ursuline, it kind of what stuck out to me is you know. They came out playing with some energy on all three phases. Right. I'm telling you, I, I just feel like that week one loss to Walsh Jesuit going to kind of be the fuel for them all year. You know what I mean? I ain't I, nothing I like starting that. the season, you know what I mean, losing the game. It ain't that they got whooped on or nothing like that, but you just lose that You lose that first game. That that, that bad taste going to always be in your mouth for the rest of the year. Urgency. Yes. That sense of urgency where – Whereas you, there's a lot of teams that get a false sense of achievement. Yep. You know, you get a false sense of Chiefs jump out there two and zero. Maybe one quality opponent. Maybe, right. Maybe one one program or that, none. No or, quality. Yeah, or opponent. no quality opponent. Or you know, maybe it's an opponent that's you know like a Glen Oak, like you said, somebody Fact. that's trying to establish themselves. Um, so you know, but you know, we lose that week one game and right. that sense of urgency. Now it's like... I feel like you're sitting there, you know what I mean? Now people say in the back of your head, something's in the back of your brain. Mm-hmm. I think that's in the front and the back of their brain. You right. know what I mean? The fact they lost in week one. So they know they're a good football team, but they also know the feeling of if we don't play our best football, come out with the right mindset that we can lose. You know what right. I mean? So right. I think I think you could kind of see that spirit coming from Ursuline. Um, we all know they got a great staff. They got pieces everywhere. Um, shout out to the kid, Deshaun Will, bad starting point guard on the basketball team, mm-hmm. came out to play football this year. I think he already got two picks in three weeks, had a pick against Farrell, um, a nice play. Um, shout out to the cornerback, the young cornerback, Ray, number 14, that corner. He had a pick also. Mm-hmm. So the thing with, with Ursuline is we know they got good football players, but then they also developing some more young players to bring to the party. That's going to help them as they get on the back stretch of the season. Um, looking at Farrell. Number one, anytime you ain't got Jules playing, you ain't got your best football player playing, it's going to be tough. Right. You know what I mean? And kind of what we talked about it, not only is he their best football player, you could tell he's that 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 tone setter for him. You know what I mean? He's the one that's going to come out here every mm-hmm. night, let the other team know we ain't backing down from nobody. We ain't scared of nobody. We're going to be right here. Not that feral kids are. They ain't never scared of nobody, but you still always need a tone setter. Right. You know what I right. mean? That's going right. to set the example in doing it, especially if your tone setter can go get you 200, 300 yards any given Friday or Saturday and get you four or five touchdowns. So it was clear that they missed Jules. But then you also seen that they got some other young pieces. You know what I mean? Right. Shout out to the twins over there. They making plays, playing in the slot, playing in the backfield. Still got Julius Phillips. Um, Aaron Pagese, young quarterback, only a sophomore. So every week he's going to get better. The game going to slow down. And and when they get to the playoffs and get more to the play in the competition closer to their division, they're going to be scared. So it was one of them games. Ursuline jumped out on them. You know what I mean? Kind of did what they were supposed to do, took advantage of the weather and everything. But, you know, still was a great atmosphere to be in. Um, I love being around both. We love being around both teams and both staffs. Both sides show us love. So, uh, Ursuline jumped out on them, took care of business, you know what I mean, for the most part. But, you know, it was still great to be in there. You still can kind of see what both teams' mindset was moving forward. So, like you said, I think Farrell was, you know, they never want to lose, but they know they're playing for a bigger goal at the end of the season. And sometimes you play good programs, they may get the best of you. We learn what we need to learn. We wash ourselves off, pick ourselves up, and we keep moving forward. Right, you know. And, and add to that, like you said, uh, you know, the young quarterback, he got a chance to – to the play, right? You know, what I'm saying to play against a, a program like Ursuline and to, and to get his get his war wounds, to mm-hmm. pay his dues. Yep. And um, it was it was it was definitely uh, if you wanted to pull a silver lining out of what the situation was for Farrell, um, it was it was cool to see, you know, Coach Pegues get to coach his son in a, in a time of adversity. Right. And um, I had to happen to be on the sideline, you know, what I'm saying doing a couple of well. A lot of those drives is rough, but right. you know, what I'm saying after 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 a rough drive, one of them rough drives, and you know, just to see him coach him, 
Right. Like just to see if coach's son through it, or, mm-hmm. or I could say coach's son, but coach's quarterback, right. coach's young quarterback through it. Who happens you, to be his son. Who happens to right. be his son. Right. And, um, you know, his message was, you know, this is where the leadership get developed. You know, this is, this is where it happens at, you know? So, you know, I, I, I that and, was, and who better, who, 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 better, know, who right. better, you know what I mean? I'm sure to Aaron first, coach McGee's dad first, coach McGee second. But then, like, when you get rid of all of that, who better to get you prepared for those moments than the guy that's won a state championship as the starting quarterback, won a state championship as the offensive coordinator, won a state championship as the head coach, and just so happened to be your dad that been taking care of you and teaching you valuable lessons. So right. I know Aaron also knows he's he's in the best hands he could possibly be in. But that's that's a beautiful dynamic to see, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. from the outside looking in, we we still see dad and his son. You know what I mean? Right, right. When they together on his game days, practice on the game line is 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 coach and player. But it's still a beautiful dynamic to see. You know what I mean? Shout out to Coach Begeese and Aaron. Keep doing y'all thing. Keep grinding and everything. Gonna you know? Yeah, they and, gonna be where they need. And to we be have talked about it in the in the um in the preview of this game, but. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to shout out to Coach Reardon and, shout out Coach and his uh special team. Yeah. His special team. You know, they kept <laughs> putting the ball, putting the ball, pooch kicking it over. They to found the their spot. Line. Right. They found yeah. their spot, you know what I mean? And, and Farrell's kick return that they can know they can kind of pooch it and get a chance to get down get there the return. and recover one. And they did. You right. Know what I mean? Right. For all three phases, we talk about all I think every head coach preaches it. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times all head coaches that they're, they're they don't back up their work. Right, right. 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 So right. you can say special teams is important, but you don't really work on it in practice. You ain't being aggressive in special teams as you may be on offense and defense. So when you got a coach that's being aggressive on all three phases, it just makes the kids lock in more and understand that special teams is important. Coach, coaches, he attacking special teams the same way he attacked offense the same way Coach McGlynn Great attacking point. defense and Coach DeSantis is, is attacking the offensive side of the ball. So, it's Coach Reardon. It's a Coach Reardon team. You know what I mean? Special teams, they're going to be aggressive. Um, they're going to keep a trick play, a couple trick plays up their sleeve, and they he got the right timing to know when to bring it out. So, the day, they're moving in the right direction. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's Ursuline. They're moving in the right direction. And, and and for me, we'll talk about it on another show. Only got one question about Ursuline, but we'll talk about that in another show Absolutely. at another date and time. So yeah, so shout out to shout out to Ursuline, shout out to Ellie House, our sponsors for our game. For sure, week. shout out Ellie House, baby. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break. Hold on, bro. Before we go, bro. Before we go, we gotta make sure we shout out our Ellie House player of the game. We'll run it down. You for know me. what I mean? Our Ellie House player of the game this week. You know, even though the game got it was rain delay, got called, we still gonna give love to somebody. We have to. So this week we're gonna give it to. Ursuline senior linebacker, John Frago. All right, John, they only played pretty much a half a ball. John still got six total tackles at the 25-yard fumble recovery to the field. If they play four, if they play four quarters, he's probably looking at a 10-plus tackle night. You know what I mean? Maybe he might get up to 15. This is a kid who coming off leading Ursuline in tackles last year. I'm pretty sure last year he had 120 tackles. So I'm sure his goal probably this year is to get 150. And this game, he was on pace to almost get 150 in one night. You know what right. I mean? He got six tackles in one half, picked up a fumble recovery, ran it in. That play was kind of like, you felt it like, okay, this could be a long night after that. You know right. what I mean? Right. had already scored. Right. They got the fumble recovery on special teams and scored. And it was like Farrell was right back on offense. And you look up, and John running up the sideline on the fumble recovery for a touchdown. So right. shout out to John Fragos, man. Keep doing your thing. Tackle machine. You know what I mean? We respect your game here at Between the Lines sure. with Coach Stella. You know, we sending you love. And we be to see you soon, John. All right. So shout out to John. Shout sure. out to Ursuline. Shout right. out to uh, Farrell giving us a, uh, our hospitality as always. Definitely. And um, that's our Ellie House Game of the Week recap. And yeah. we'll be right back. Shout out Ellie House, baby. LB checking in, man. Keep it locked in with In Between the Lines with Coach Tully. You feel me? You did. 